We also have Barista Mfong Eko. Is she here with us? All right, please put your hands together for her. Please, let's keep clapping while she will welcome Mrs. Barista Mfong Eko. She's going to give us a goodwill message. Jam your hands together for her. Please keep clapping. She's my mentor. Why, wow, you're welcome. I saw you when you came in. I didn't know you were the one. Yeah, you're welcome. then tell or that I was just coming into Lagos today. I actually thought I had missed it. And she told me, no, it's today. Let the, we need the kids to see you, so I'm here. And I'm glad I'm in the company of fantastic women and men. I'm a maritime lawyer. I studied, I studied maritime law at the University of Southampton. And I remember when I chose maritime law, and this is why I chose maritime law. It just sounded exotic. <laughs> I mean, I, I went to the admissions office and I was just saying, just give me any law. And the woman looked at me and said, we're looking for five Africans, not Nigerians, just five Africans that we will take on this journey. And I was like, what journey? And before then, I had studied public and business law. I had studied law. I had studied international law. I had studied even I had studied private and Islamic law. I had studied all types of law, and I was looking for a challenge. And then she said, there's this thing called maritime law. And I said, that just on the... just." That just makes me sound intelligent. <laughs> like, anybody I just tell, hi, what are you studying? And I say maritime law. They're just like, you must be so intelligent. <laughs> so I said, but this just makes me sound intelligent. In a way that business law does not make me sound. In a way that public and international law does not make me sound. But what I did not know was I thought that my years of experience in law would make this easy. I was very sure. Maritime law is a fantastic field. It's like the science of law. That's what I call it. I call it the science of law. But once you crack the code, it's like what Mr. Luther said, once you crack that code, you are head and shoulders above all your peers. All, minus not all. Because, and we're, we're talking about the blue economy. The blue economy is so wide. It's so, we try to define what the blue economy is. We try to say, oh, this is what fits under the blue economy. The truth is, every single thing fits under the blue economy. Every single job, every single role, every single industry is tied to the blue economy. We have... We have, we have track lines from every single industry to the water, track lines. And so I've been able to do almost any other thing that I set my hand to because I have that bedrock. And I can stand here and give you stats and, and statistics and the data, but what I just wanted you to know, based on the theme of this, is that I consider us the transition generation. And I explain it this way. Our parents fared in the, what I call the labor economy. You work hard, you get paid. So it was really the work of your hands. 
we are now transitioning into the knowledge economy, which is you know something, you get paid. It is no more just the work of your hands. It is the validity and the usability of what you know that makes you get paid. And so I say the blue economy has met the orange economy. The orange economy is if you're in the creative industry, whatever you can produce from who you are, what you know. And the creative industry, if it was a country, it would be the fourth largest country in the world. If the blue economy was a country, it would be the third largest country in the world with a budget of twice every military um, budget of the world. So we're dealing with something that is so wide, so vague. I am a maritime lawyer, but I'm a, I'm a human behavior specialist. I am a psychologist and a leadership coach. I'm the executive director of the John Maxwell team on one hand, and I run the Discovery Center, a trained organization on the other hand, and I'm still a maritime lawyer. It just means that the possibilities are endless. And I was gonna rush for a meeting, and I came with a, a good friend of mine. He's a lawyer. His name is Barista Buiga. Please clap for him, because he, he made me stay. And he said, you have to stay. And I was like, well, we have a meeting. He said, you have to stay. And the reason you have to stay is because if I had this kind of knowledge when I was in secondary school, I would have made better choices. And so I just wanted to show you a living, breathing prototype of what and, and I think the host has done a great job of just putting in front of you living, breathing prototypes of women who have forayed into this, this large industry and are doing fantastically well in the industry. It, we can literally go anywhere. And, and this is what I want to say to the students. You, you have more information now than we ever did. You have... Just being in this room alone, I mean, we had guardian counselors, you know those guardian counselor things when we were in school, but we never really did much with it, except maybe we were in trouble. Mm -hmm. So what, what Mr. Lighton has done is that she's, she's taken the responsibility of education, and that is the most important thing. She's taking the responsibility of education to say, let me show you the option if you have, but let me show it to you early. It's what they do in developed countries. So when I went abroad and did my master's, I was like, why didn't they tell me this? Some people I was schooling with knew this from when they were 10, 14. I knew this when I was 28, getting to 30. And I'm like, why didn't anybody tell me this? Why didn't I waste so much time studying private and Islamic, why didn't anybody tell me about this field that is so vast that by the time you come out, you are like the toast of town. You are the one people want because you know something that only 2% of the population know. Anybody that is involved in the blue economy knows something that only 2% of the population knows. So when it comes to jobs, your options are endless. Endless. I remember how, how many jobs are. It was kind of like when someone tells you in Nigeria, and that's what William said as well, when someone tells you in Nigeria there's a, there's a lack of jobs, you're like, where? It's, it's, it's not my experience. It has never been my experience that there's a lack. So I'm just here to tell you, enjoy yourself. Use the knowledge you have, um, investigate, experiment with this field, experiment with this field, enjoy yourself, know that the possibilities are endless and that there are women whose doors you can knock on. And that's one of the most important things. There are women whose doors you can knock on to say, I need help. Or... I would like some direction. I am here 
The entire high table is here. Use those opportunities. Once I entered this field, I used the opportunities of mentorship. I used the opportunities of just, if someone says, you can come to me, I would go to them. And it made my way five times faster than any of my peers. And so I'm just here to say uh, welcome. It's great to meet you. I will be here next year. I, it's, it's, on that one, I give my word uh, because I think she did the job of looking for me. So I will be here next year, but I'm already a part of your lives. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.